Hello Arts 102, welcome to the Photoshop demo for the balance unit. I'm going to show some brushes in Photoshop and I'm going to show how to basically use the Wacom tablet as they say. So let me get this closed out here. Alrighty. Um, the very first thing I want you to do is um, I want you to go to your software preferences and you can get there from the Apple menu on the top left uh, system preferences and you should see a Wacom tablet prefer preferences set if you don't see that preferences set then um, the drivers have not been installed and you need to install those drivers if you haven't already. So um, if you're at LCC you will have to get the help of somebody at the window and they will either install the drivers or they will put you on a computer that has been configured correctly or if you're at home you need to open up the manual it might have come your tablet might have come with a CD or they might want to direct you to a website and if you want to, you can, if you know your model number, you can very quickly just open up Google and just search for, um, I already had the search in here because I just installed my driver, your Wacom, your, um, your model name, driver, and then mine was for Mac. So, <clears throat> quick, easy way to grab the drivers. Um, if you have um, the drivers installed, you should be able to try testing the pressure and just make sure that that's working. You should be able to set the sensitivity, I usually uh, for tilt and for pressure and other sensitivities as well. And there's a bunch of other stuff you can f configure if you want to, but um, mainly I just wanted to make sure that the drivers were installed and the pressure is working and the tilt is working and you can check on the mapping too. You want the whole area of the um, tablet to be in use and just map all the way to the screen. I just want this in pen mode and <clears throat> I want to probably have it in landscape orientation. You might want portrait but more likely than not landscape is better and that's about it. That's all you really need to know. Um, if you haven't got that installed, then go install those drivers and come back. The, t the use of the tablet is, again, it's required if you're a face-to-face -face class. It's recommended if you're an online class. So they have them in the Gannon Labs, just so you know, just in case that happens to be an option for you. <clears throat> so uh, the idea is just that I want you to give it a shot, and it won't be... Um, anything that I'll push after this assignment but some students will really like it and some students might not so if you give it a shot you'll know it should feel very close to natural drawing just as long as it's configured correctly if it's not configured right then it won't feel that way so I'm in Photoshop now I'm gonna just start a new file and I've got, um, let's make it 2500 by 2500. And basically what I wanted to do was just kind of show you how this happens and what it looks like. First of all, we want the brush tool on over here. This is, again, a tool that is in a drawer. You can tell by that little triangle on the bottom right. That drawer is, it's got the brush tool, pencil, color replacement, and mixer brush in it. And those other three look really close to the brush tool. So make sure you're actually on the brush tool. Again, any of those tools with a triangle on the bottom right, any of those buttons, there's more stuff inside that button. If you hold it down for about a half second, it'll pop open that drawer. So keep that in mind as you're working. And again, let's take a look at the options up here. The options are um, along the top bar. They change according to what tool you have selected. 
So you want to make sure you got your eye on that. And I'm going to open up the brush panel. I'm going to pop this open. And over here I've got some different options. Those are stuff you can just experiment with. Um, and on the top one here, this brush tip shape, these are the different basic brushes that I can use. Um, there's circular brushes, and these guys up here, after these first circular brushes, these guys are brush simulators, and they work like, um, or try to work like real brushes. So this is like a round tip with a point. Um, so round tip flat, round tip ch uh, chisel, or that might be a flat tip chisel. Um, this is a fan head brush, another round rounded point, so and so on. And then we've got um, we've got some air brushes, and you can see there's quite a few. There's um, there's some dirt brushes. These make some like dirt textures. Might sound silly, but that can be really really useful just drawing some different dirt textures and kind of dirtying things up because digital stuff tends to look uh, really perfect. <clears throat> um, and there's some noise textures. Actually, I think the Photoshop might be calling this a dirt brush and, and these ones noise brushes. I'm not sure, but you get the idea. Uh, a lot of students have a lot of fun with these grass brushes. Um, maple leaf brush and other kinds of leaves and then there's some more dirt brushes and it just kind of goes on like that so this is just basically stuff to play with so I'm just gonna turn on one of these brushes I'll use a round tip and what you're gonna have here is um, I'm going to turn on black and white over here, so I've got a black colored pen. Um, what's going to happen is with this tablet, it's going to react to the pressure and it's going to react to the tilt of the pen. So you can see it's getting larger and smaller. I don't know if that's the best example. I'm going to make my brush a little bigger. The brush um, size is the left and right bracket. You might want to learn that shortcut key for this assignment. It helps with uh, helps things go quicker to change your brush size quickly. So, okay, now we can see a little bit more clearly the brush is reacting to the tilt and the pressure of the tablet. So that's one of the big advantages of of using a tablet is that it's it's designed to feel a lot more like natural drawing and it's very sensitive and able to pick up on your uh, movements. So I'll try another brush here. So again you can see tilt it and rotation as well, the rotation of my hand. So there's a lot of subtlety that I can put into my brush strokes when I'm using this a lot more than with a mouse. So now I'll switch to the mouse and you'll see all I can really do is just draw more or less. Um, if I use a circular brush by default this stuff might not be turned on so I gotta go down to shape dynamics right right down here. This is the first category of tweaks you can put on your brushes. And all I really am going to do is I'm just going to turn the control to pen pressure. And that's going to make my brush smaller with lower pressure and larger with higher pressure. And you'll see what I mean. So here's a real light stroke and here's a real heavy stroke. So that kind of stuff is um, what I'm talking about when I say give the pen a try. Um, give the tablet a try if, if it's at all possible. Um, if, you're, uh, <clears throat> if you like it, then you'll have lots of fun with it this semester, and if you don't like it, then you don't have to use it. So 
if I turn on another um, brush tip shape here, such as grass, what's going to happen is I'm going to get a really regular grass pattern, and that might be interesting, and it actually kind of is, um, made this kind of interesting little contour drawing, but it certainly doesn't look much like grass. Uh, well, first of all, it's not the right color, but even if it was, let's choose a green color. Um, let me, before I go any further, let me talk a little bit more about the color picker. I don't know how much I've talked about this yet, but um, I'll jump into the color picker. If I click on one of these swatches here, this is my foreground and this one here is my background. And what happens is the color picker pops up and it works on a hue basis. So the hue is chosen on this little strip on the left. And then what happens over here in this big square, this is my actual color that's chosen right here. I can click anywhere on that. Um, what happens on this square is down at the bottom are the darker values and up at the top are the lighter values. Over to the right are the more saturated colors and over to the left are the left sa less saturated colors. And as you go all the way to the left you actually get into grayscale. So um, if you went all the way to the left it doesn't matter where your hue is because it's all going to be gray. So what I find is that uh, students who are new to design like to go right up here and use the most saturated brightest color for any of these hues. There's a whole area down here that you can try out. So you don't have to, you can dial it back a notch on your colors. Okay, so for a grass color I might choose a little bit of a yellowy green and just bring the saturation down a titch and the brightness and then I'll click OK. Oops, I think I've got this on grayscale mode. I'm going to click on image mode. Yep, there it is. It's on grayscale when I started the new file. I didn't catch that. So I'm not going to get any colors out of that. Um, if you get a template off of the uh, D2L area and it's in grayscale mode, it's because I want you to work in grayscale mode. But if you want to put color into something, um, assuming that the assignment allows it, then if it's in grayscale mode it's not going to let you. You'll have to change it to one of the color modes and we can just use RGB color. Don't worry about what that means right now but basically just figure grayscale, obviously that's grayscale, and RGB color, if you want color, just turn on RGB color. And now I'll get color grass. Okay, but it's still way too regular. So what we need to do to get this to look more realistic is we should turn on some scattering right over here on my next brush option down. And I can scatter up to whatever percent I want. I can I can actually scatter to the point that it's kinda all over the place. That's up here. Or I can bring it down a notch and kind of keep it in more or less the line that I paint. I can also jitter the count and if you've got a pen you can just put this on pen pressure. So if you're lightly pressing you get a lot of little ones and if you're pressing hard you get more big ones. So that's a little bit the shape dynamics too but let's bump up the count jitter some so we can see that a little more. Okay let's bring up the count and the count jitter. <laughs> The jitter, the word jitter is just referring to a kind of a randomizing so that you can um, just add some some quality of, you know, just take out some of that regularity. There we go. So as I as I swipe my pen across the tablet, 
Um, if I'm pressing harder, I get more blades of grass, and if I'm not pressing as hard, I get fewer blades of grass. And also they're smaller. That's because of the shape dynamics that I set up here. If I were to turn this pen pressure off, then it wouldn't matter how hard I was pressing. They would all be the same size. I'm doing that kind of fast. I'm sorry. So I'm pressing real hard. I'm getting this size grass blade. Now I'm going to press real light and I'm getting the same size grass blade, but fewer of them. Oops, let's put that back to pen pressure. You could also just make it a random size. You could kind of jitter the size a little bit and let it randomize some and just turn the control off. That's another option with these brushes. So, <clears throat> um, one more thing I'm going to do, and I'm not going to belabor this this grass brush anymore, but um, one more thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to show a thing. This is a very regular color pattern. There's a background color here, and it kind of is the one that's sort of behind the, the foreground swatch. And you can click on that background color and pick another color. You can go kind of a yellowy color here. You can make that one a tad more saturated if you want to. And I'm going to see if, uh, so now we've got two colors chosen. There's my foreground and my background, you can see there. And I'm going to get the colors to kind of jitter between the foreground and the background, and it looks like they're not going to do that by default. So I'm going to go over here to Color Dynamics, and I'm going to turn that on. And there's this foreground background jitter. That's a good choice for these brushes where you're going for a natural look like grass or dirt or foliage. You can jump between the foreground and background and you get more of a blend of colors than just one solid static color. And that helps your look a little bit more. Um, So you can see it's kind of blending between the two. Let's make that a little bigger. Okay, so these are things that you can experiment with, things to play with with your brushes. Now we're getting some some more interesting color effects. Um, <clears throat> okay, but I said I wasn't going to belabor this grush bra grass brush anymore. <laughs> so um, let's go back to the brush tip shape here. And I'm going to turn on a round tip brush. And what's going to happen is I've got that scattering and that color dynamics on, and that, that stuff is still on. So you can see the brush is scattering and all kinds of interesting stuff here. Now that, I don't know why that came out black. That's strange. That should not have happened. But for now I'm going to pretend that it didn't. <laughs> okay, let's undo those. I'm going to change it back to black and white. And I don't really want the color dynamics on or the scattering. I'm going to leave the shape dynamics on. So I've still got the shape of the brush tip changing. Okay, so I'm going to close this file. I don't need to save that. And I'm going to grab my thumbnail template. Okay. And again, the goal of this assignment is to, you're going to show me symmetrical, asymmetrical, and radial balance. You're going to do three thumbnails of each of those. And I'm like, high, I'm pointing at these rows like they matter. They, it doesn't matter what order they're in, just as long as there's three of them. Um, so for symmetrical, just as long as you draw something that has a mirror line in it. Remember that mirror line. Um, 
But what I want you to do when you're doing this assignment is before you even draw something, what I'd like you to do is create a new layer. If you already have drawn something, just undo it and create a new layer. Instead of just drawing on the background here, because if I draw on the background, I can't do anything with it. It's all just being mashed into the pixels with the background. So I don't want that. I'm going to undo that and I'm going to put it on a new layer. The This is up to you if you want to just do one new layer and draw everything on that one layer or if you want to really get the maximum benefit out of it you could create a new layer for each one. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to rename this if it'll let me. There we go. Just short sim1 for symmetry. And if I want to do a symmetry then I'm, I'm just going to draw something that has a mirror line. It just has to go straight between two points. There we go. Um, and I'm not saying you should draw this line in yours. I'm just doing it as an illustration. But, um, and I don't even know what to draw, you know, just make sort of a vague butterfly shape. When I do these demos, let me make something clear. I'm not saying that this is good design. I'm just saying these are the tools you're going to use. Um, you can turn on the marquee, the rectangular marquee, if you like. This is only going to work if you're using your layers. <clears throat> and you can draw a marquee around your left, left side or right side, whichever. Turn on the Move tool and hold down Alt or Option and just move that over. And you've got a copy of it. Okay? And that's great, but you haven't flipped it yet. You still have to do that. So, quick and easy way to flip it, go up to the Edit menu, and under Transform, you can choose Flip Horizontal. Or if you're doing this vertically, you can choose Flip Vertical. And there is a symmetrical de design, quick and easy. And like I said, it's on its own layer, so I can I can manipulate it individually. I'm not saying this is a great symmetrical design, but that's one easy way to do it. And if you wanted to, let's do another one real quick. I'm going to make another layer, and I'm going to call it Sim2. Remember, the instructions say, they, they don't say you have to draw every you know, the the marks on the page don't all have to be hand drawn is what I'm saying is you can you can make a drawing you can copy it flip it um, move, push some pixels move things around that's fine so keep that in mind when you're doing these designs um, now if I do want to actually draw it I can do that too and remember the um, the idea of symmetry is um, it doesn't have to be exact. I mean, it's not like I'm going to fold the paper in half and check every molecule. So um, if I'm doing a rough symmetry, or what I referred to as new school symmetry, um, let's see, what's a... I'll just draw some random shapes here. That's all I'm really doing is just random shapes. I don't want to make it too crazy. Okay, so I can take a shape like that and I'm going to get some gestalt going here, some interesting foreground, background interplay and, you know, I can just, whoops! I can just try to mirror the other side as well. So, this might be an interesting approach if you're um, into a more organic look. Ooh, 
kind of whizzed it at the end there. But, uh, yeah, that did not come out too great. Let's erase a little bit of this. Let's see if I can get at least a little bit more accurate. Like I said, these are not intended to be great designs. I'm just kind of blazing through them to show you the tools here. So, there we go. That's cl <laughs> that's close-ish. Um, but um, you can you can draw it if you want, or like I said, you can you can just grab an element and copy it. You're not required to draw the elements over and over again. You can definitely copy them. Um, for an asymmetrical design, they have no mirror line. Um, oops. Let's make a new layer here. Also, um, as a tip just to be aware of, the symmetrical balance is something that a lot of students get confused with radial balance. I've seen a lot of students that turn in um, what they thought was symmetrical but is actually radial. Remember that if it's radial, it's not symmetrical or asymmetrical. Radial trumps both. So when you're drawing these, just be careful you don't accidentally draw radial balance because that's something that a lot of students do. Reevaluate when you're done. Um, so let's make an asymmetrical design here. Let's do some brush size variation too. That'd be a little more interesting. doesn't need that. Okay, so the asymmetrical just has no mirror line. It's something that is, um, I can't draw, I can't draw a mirror line anywhere on here. And it won't, there's no, there's no, like, like there is with symmetrical, there's a mirror line, there's a copy on each side. I can't do that on the asymmetrical drawing. Remember, the mirror line does not have to be vertical, so you want to make sure that you can't draw like a diagonal mirror line and end up with a copy on both sides. <clears throat> a lot of students ask also, how do I, how do I clean up the edges here? And I don't really require too much that you beat yourself up over that, but a lot of students would like to do it. There's a couple ways to do it. Um, maybe the easiest way is when you get started with one of these. Let's do a second asymmetrical. Start by turning on your rectangular marquee tool. That's up here. Second one down. M is the shortcut key and just draw a marquee that encompasses that box. Try to do it as precisely as you can. And then I'm going to switch back to my brush. I'm going to use the shortcut key of B to turn the brush on. And it won't let me draw beyond the boundaries of that selection. So I've made a selection now. I just, I think I made it kind of radial. I, probably not too radial, but. That's one way to do it. If you need to do it after the fact, um, let's deselect that. Select, deselect. So I'm turning off that selection. And I'm gonna switch back to this layer And I can turn on my eraser and set the mode to block. 
this is if you've already got it drawn and you want to clean up the edges. Um, what I'm going to do is to get a nice straight line, I can just hold down the shift key when I do this and just erase the edges. And I don't want students getting the impression that you need to draw this mirror line on your symmetrical uh, designs either, so let's get rid of that. Okay, now probably you're going to instinctively start going over here and try to start erasing, and you're going to say, well, what the heck is going on there? Um, that's on a different layer. See, I'm on this layer. I can erase stuff on, on this layer when that's selected. i got to select Sim 2 to erase stuff on this layer. So, And I forgot to mention, let's see if my pen does this. If I flip the pen over, um, I know the models that LCC have do this, but I'm not sure if you're using a home, if you're using a tablet at home, what you've got. If you flip the te the pen over, it should have an eraser on the other side, which is really nice. Just kind of contributes to the natural feel of the tool, so I can kind of erase the edges there. And I'll do the same thing on this. I think that's the only one that went out of bounds. That one, yeah, that's in there. Okay, so, so you get the idea. I'm going to turn the brush tool back on again. And let's use a different brush. Let's turn on, let's try a chisel tip. Why not? And I'll make a new layer for Radial 1. And let's make that selection. I just pressed M for the marquee tool. I'll select the box so I can't draw outside of it. I didn't get that quite as precise as I'd like to. I'm going to deselect that. Select, deselect. Command D or Control D on PC is the shortcut for that. And let's make that selection a little better. That'll do. You can nudge that selection with the arrow keys too. I'm going to nudge it just one to the right and one up. Just to get it a little bit more precise. So, now a radial selection, again, that is going to radiate out from a central center point. I don't know how far I'm going to get with this brush. Maybe what I need is, let's try a round tip. No, let's try an airbrush. No. I think I'll stick to my chisel point. <laughs> so the kind of things that are radial, things like uh, flowers. This is not a great flower. Oops, let's just leave it. Um, flowers are a good example of radial designs. Um, or just use your imagination. and You don't have to draw anything in the center, but the point is that the elements are radiating out from the center point. So, and we're just playing around with these sketches just to try stuff out anyway, so let's try another radial. I just switched to my marquee tool with the M key. I'm going to draw my selection. This isn't a necessity, I just find that a lot of students want to know how to do that. I'll press B to turn the brush back on. And once again, just elements radiate from the center point in a radial design. And the focal point is really easy to maintain in a radial design. It's a very, um, very much like all roads lead to the focal point on a radial design. So 
you're going to have a very strong focal point, even if you don't actually draw anything there when you make a radial design. So um, these are the rest of these settings. Um, like I said, we don't need to go through every detail of every, every setting in Photoshop. Um, it's, it's not all stuff you need to know for this class, but you're welcome to experiment and look stuff up on those different brush dynamics as well. Um, when you're done with your thumbnails, you want to start a new file, and let me get the size to make sure I've got the size right. Um, I'm going to check on the instructions just to make sure. You can actually use your pen to navigate your computer too, by the way, like a mouse. It's not really my preference, but some people like to do it. So, there we go. I need a 7 by 8 at 72 pixels per inch grayscale. So, I'm going to do File New, and I'm going to change the width to 7 inches. you got to check your units before you change your width, because if you change it right now, you're going to have 7 pixels, and that's not a whole heck of a lot of information. So, let's change that to inches, and now we can change it to 7 by 5, and it's already on 72 pixels per inch. So. <clears throat> I can click OK, and then I can take one of those designs from each category and finalize it on this sheet. So I make a nice, big, um, more refined version of my favorite design, my favorite radial, my favorite asymmetrical, and my favorite symmetrical. They will be turned in in the Dropbox. Um, make sure you read all the instructions and have fun with it.